So here we're looking at further solving oblique triangles. This time we're given three sides, or two sides and an included angle. Now when we're given three sides or two sides on an included angle, our sine rule will not initially work. So we use the law of cosines instead. So if we're given side B and side C and the included angle A, then we can find side A. So this is a squared then would be equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Similar to find side b, we can use b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b and similarly to find side c. We can also use this to find the included angle if we have all three sides. So if we have all three sides, we could possibly find angle A. So if we rearrange this, we get cosine of A would be equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. Now to find angle A, all we would have to do is find the arc cosine of all of this. So A would be equal to cosine inverse of b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc. And similarly we can find angle b and angle c. So here we have an example of using the law of cosine to solve an oblique triangle. Our triangle is abc, we're given angle c which is 105 degrees, we're given side b which is 4.5 units and side a which is 9 units. So we have two sides on an included angle. Because we have two sides on an included angle, we can use our cosine rule to find side C. From our cosine rule, we know C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Substituting for A, B, and C, we get 9 squared plus 4.5 squared minus 2 times 9 times 4.5 times cosine of 105 and this simplifies to give us 122.21 now this is c squared so to find c we take the square root of this so c comes out to be 11.06 units now we need to find angle a and angle b we can still use our cosine rule to find angle a and angle b however at this stage it might be easier to use our sine rule since we have side C and angle C. So we can use that to find angle A. We, if we rewrite this, we know that sine of A is equal to A times the sine of C over C. Substituting for A, angle C, and C, and taking the arc sine of this, we get 51.85 degrees. So now we have angle A, which is 51.85 degrees. We know there's 180 degrees in our triangle. So if we subtract 51.85 and 105, we get angle B, which is 23.15 degrees. So here we have solved our triangle. We have all three sides and all three angles. Here's another example of using the law of cosines to solve a triangle. This time we're given the three sides. Side A is equal to 55, side B is equal to 25, and side C is equal to 72. Now from this we can find any of our three angles using the law of cosines. In general, it's best to solve for our largest angle. If our largest angle is obtuse, then we know our next two angle must be an acute angle or if our largest angle is an acute angle then the next two angle must also be acute so how do we know which is the largest angle well the largest angle is always opposite our largest side so here 72 is our largest side so our largest angle is angle c similarly our smallest angle would be angle b since angle b is our side b is our smallest side now to find our largest angle, we can use c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. Now if we solve this equation for cosine c, 
we have cosine c is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. Now substituting for a, b, and c, we get 55 squared plus 25 squared minus 72 squared all over 2 times a, which is 55, times b, which is 25. And this simplifies to give us negative 0.5578. Now to find angle C, we take the arc cosine of this figure here, and that comes out to be 123.91 degrees. So here we have an obtuse angle, which means our next two angles must be acute, since they both add up to less than 90 degrees. Now let's find angle B and angle A. Once again, we can use our cosine rule to find angle A and angle B. However, it's generally simpler to go back to our sine rule to find our remaining angles. So now we can use B over sine B is equal to C over sine C since we have side C, angle C, and side B, which leave our only unknown to be angle B. Solving for sine B, we have B times sine C all over C. Now substituting for B, angle C, and C, and simplifying this so we get 0.2888. To find angle B, we take the arc cosine of that number, so angle B comes out to be 16.75 degrees. Now because there's only 180 degrees in our triangle, we can subtract both of these angles from 180, which gives us angle A, which is 39.34 degrees. In this example, we are asked to solve a parallelogram to find the missing sides and angle. Now we can see in our diagram here that our parallelogram is comprised of several triangles. So we can use our laws of sine or cosine to solve this parallelogram. We're given two sides, sides A and B, A is equal to 25 units, B is equal to 35 units, and we're also told that phi, angle phi here, is equal to 120 degrees. So our three unknowns are theta, side C, and side D. Now let's start by finding theta. We know that the two angles of a parallelogram, these two angles here, add up to 180 degrees. So since we know phi, theta would be 180 minus phi, or 180 minus 120. So angle theta <coughs> is equal to 60 degrees. So we have our first unknown. Now let's look at finding side D. Since we have theta, which is 60 degrees, we have two sides and an included angle, we can use our cosine rule to find side D. We know D is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of theta, which is 60. Now this simplifies to give us 975. So d is equal to the square root of 975, or 31.22 units. Now let's find side C. Here we have side B. Since this is a parallelogram, we know this side is equal to this side. So now we also have this side, which is 25. We have this side, this side, we also have our angle. In our parallelogram, this angle is also equal to this angle. So we have two sides and an included angle, so we can find side C. So C squared would be 25 squared plus 35 squared minus 2 times 25 times 35 times the cosine of our included angle, which is 120 degrees. Now this simplifies to give us 2725 Taking the square root of that, give us side C, which is 52.20 units. Now we're going to look at finding the area of a triangle given three sides. When we're given three sides to find the area of a triangle, we can use what's known as Heron's formula. Now Heron's formula is sometimes called our semi-perimeter formula, and you'll see why. Because here the formula is given as the square root of s times s minus side a times s minus side b times s minus side c where s is a plus b plus c all over 2 
So a plus b plus c is actually our perimeter of our triangle, and dividing it by 2 gives us half the perimeter. So you can understand why sometimes this is called the semi-perimeter formula. So s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, and we find all the square root of all of that, and that should give us the area of our triangle. Now let's look at an example. So here we're given the three sides of a triangle, with one side being 2.5, our second side being 10.2, and our third side is 9. And we're asked to find the area using Heron's formula. So the first thing we need to do is find S, which is half the perimeter. To find S, we add the three sides, A plus B plus C, and we divide by 2. So S comes out to be 10.85. We know from Heron's formula that it's S times S minus A, which is 2.5, times S minus B, which is 10.2, times S minus C, which is 9. Now this simplifies to give us 108.94. Taking the square root of that gives us the area of our triangle, which is approximately 10.44 square units. So here we have an application problem. We're told that two ships leave our port. So here's our port, our origin. And one travels at a bearing of north, 53 degrees west. So this is our north and this is our west. So north, west, 53 degrees would be here. So this is our angle, 53 degrees. And it's traveling at 12 miles per hour. We're told that the other ship travels at a bearing of southwest. So this will be southwest at a bearing of 67 degrees. So here we have 67 degrees at 16 miles per hour. And we're asked to find approximate how far apart they are at noon that day. Now telling us that it's noon, telling us that it's three hours after 9 a.m. So their total travel time is three hours. So if we know they're traveling for three hours and the first ship is traveling at 12 miles per hour, it travels a total distance of 36 miles. Our second ship travels at 16 miles an hour. In three hours, that would be 48 miles. Now, we can find our angle between the two ships here. We know our complete angle on a straight line would be 180, since we have 90 here and 90 here. So to find this angle theta, the angle between the two ships, we could just do 180 minus 53 minus 67 which gives us 60 degrees now we can find this distance d by using our cosine rule we know that d squared is going to be equal to 36 squared plus 48 squared minus 2 times 36 times 48 times the cosine of this angle which is 60 degrees now this simplifies to give us one 1,872. This is equal to the square root of that. So the distance between the two ships then would be approximately 43.27 miles.